Your hydro boost is connected to the back of your firewall right there. You see mine is leaking right around the seal, right in this area. And you can't fix that leak. So, you know, I had to go grab a new one. So I went and grabbed a new one for like 200 bucks. And I'm gonna tell you how to get this thing off. Pretty easy. I mean, this line here, I think that's what, 18 millimeter? You'll have another one on this side, right back tucked in there, that line. That's 15 millimeter. This is just a clamp, so you just slide that up and off. Then you got a 15 millimeter on that side of your master cylinder, 15 millimeter on that side of your master cylinder. Free those up, that comes off. So all you have is one, two, three, four bolts, and this clamp, and everything's done on this side. You're free. So you can start working on the inside. I would say work on this after you do the inside. Let me show you the inside. Okay, the first thing on the inside you wanna do is you see straight up that little clamp up here, there's a clamp right there. You're gonna get a flathead screwdriver, slide it in that groove, and then with your finger, push forward this way, like push toward the steering wheel forward, and you're gonna get that little clamp off. Once that clamp's off, now you got your little yoke pieces free. Then you've got four 15 millimeter bolts. You got one here, one behind here, one up there, one up there, four 15 millimeter bolts, and now the inside is done. So once you get that clip off up there, this is what you're taking off your brake pedal sensor. It'll be sitting like this. And so what you wanna do is once you get the, that little clip off the edge, you can slide it this way, like just to get it off the, the nipple of that, the brake pedal, and then slide it straight back. And once it's straight back, it'll just drop, you can just pull it down, and now you can get up in there and you can move that uh, yoke piece up there. See if I can see it, yep. So there's my little stud up there that it was sitting on. So now my actual, um, the yoke that came off that uh, hydro boost is just sitting there. So all I gotta do now is do my four 15 millimeter bolts and I can go to the outs, uh, the engine bay and start working on that piece. To get to the bolt that's right behind the um, brake pedal almost, this is what I used. I used a 15 millimeter long, I had a like a little swivel extension there. And then I use, this is probably about a good uh, 10 inch to 12 inch um, extension. And so with the socket. And I mean, once I got it locked on there, I mean, it's, cause it can't go straight in like this. It's gonna kind of be like this a little bit at the end. But once you start ratcheting down on it, it'll come off perfectly. Then I, I got it all the way down to about three quarters. And then I just took it off the rest of the way with my, with my finger. It's pretty easy to get off. The one I'm talking about sits right behind this piece. There's a bolt that sits right there. I mean, in your once your brake pedal is free, you can move it pretty freely, but this sits right up, right behind here, and you're gonna need that extension assembly to kind of work at it. Okay, now that we got all the bolts on the inside loose, this should just pull straight off the firewall. Let's see. Yep, there it is. So it pulls all the way out, so all those bolts are out. So now what I wanna do is like I said, I wanna get this off, I think that's five eight. it's an 18 millimeter. It's a pair of pliers, they'll take that off. Don't forget about your 215s. You've got, let me see if I can hit this real quick. Yep, so there's 115 on this side that holds your master cylinder on. You got another exact one on the other side. So once you get those two off, you should be able to take your brake booster off. It's, it's not that hard. Make sure you got a good oil drip pan up under there. That's my drip pan. So all of the once, as soon as I take those hoses off, fluid's gonna kind of drop on the ground. So make sure you got a pan up under there. So, yep, here we go. So there you go. You just do a little pulling, finagling, pull this, you know, bracket kind of back a little bit. You lift it straight up and out. And there you have it sitting on the ground over there. There's my new one. I'm gonna work that one in. I'm gonna bolt my lines and every, I'm gonna bolt this. I'm gonna get one of them snug first when I put it in there. And once that's snug and I got my master cylinder bolted onto the back, then I'll work on my lines and everything. But you wanna make sure you wipe all of that stuff down, keep it nice and clean in there. But like I said, the hydro boost is out. It's time to drop the new one in. You always sit my new parts next to my old parts just to make sure everything lines up right. All the holes are facing in the right direction. Like I said, it looks pretty good should just be ready to drop in and, and let it rip. Okay, setting everything back up is a lot easier than taking it off because you know, you're not untightening factory bolts and everything. Make sure you put your hydro boost on first, master cylinder, 
and then you put your bracket on last. Make sure this bracket slides on after everything else. Like I said, this first, put on your Hydro Boost first, then work your master cylinder all the way up to be flush with it, then put your bracket on to hold it all in place. Don't put this bracket on first. I've seen people do that and they, they'll be like, hey man, I, we did the brakes, but we can't get it to pressurize right. I'll go over there and the first thing I see is a gap between the brake booster and the master cylinder. I mean the hydro boost and the master cylinder. If I see a gap between there, means you're not gonna get the full pressure you should be getting when you're hitting that master cylinder. Put this bracket on last. Okay, now as I slid it on from in the engine bay, you see how my, my rod, it's behind where it should be. So now I've got to kind of pull it out a little bit to adjust the rod to be back on this side. Because where that stud is right there, that brown stud, that's where that silver rod should be going over that. But it's going on the back side. So now i got to push it back out a little bit, move the rod over, pull it back in place. It's not that hard to do, but I'm just letting you know ahead of time before you button everything down and realize your rod's on the opposite side of that. Don't button anything down until that rod is on the right side. Now how you see us on the right side now? All I did was went into the engine bay, backed it off a little bit. I got a uh, flathead screwdriver, put it into the hole, pushed it over towards passenger side of the vehicle, then put the bolts back in, slid right in perfectly like that. Probably should do that before. So uh, hopefully you watched this video before you did the repair, before you put it back on so you can see. Make sure you slide that rod toward passenger side so it ends up on passenger side of that uh, little bracket right there. Okay, I'm gonna try to videotape, putting this piece back on for you. Uh, so what you wanna do is there's my bracket up here. Uh, so, wait a minute. So because you wanna, because it's not gonna reach from here to here, what you wanna do is kinda push the brake pedal down a little bit. Once you put the brake pedal down a little bit, you see how that'll just slide right on there like that? Wait a minute. Why ain't this thing, yeah. it won't work because it won't, um, it won't adjust, it won't focus. But anyways, push this down, put the bracket on there, then you're going to slide this piece over it like this because you got that little slit in the back. Once you get it on there, then you want to put that little clamp on. The first clamp that we took off a long time ago, that's what you put on. So make sure your, your yoke, little yoke slides on first, push the brake pedal down a little bit, Slide this on the back side up, clamp it down with the little bracket. You're done. There you go. She's all buttoned up, sounding good. No leaks. Because when that used to run, you could see it kind of bubbling up around the edges, just the pressure of the, um, the power steering pump would create bubbles like right around the edges inside of there. That's you can see, it's bone dry. All the way back, it's bone dry. I gotta kind of wipe it down with my little greasy palms in there, but as if the new part is in, everything's snug down and secure. Engine sounds perfect. This engine has about 214,000 miles on it. I've taken care of it. I bought it at 88,000 miles. And all I've done is pulled the transmission out and replaced the sun shell, a couple of solenoids, put it all back together. Things been running like a beast ever since. I did that back in 2015 or so. I mean, it's like, shoot, this thing runs nice. Sounds good. No engine ticks or clicks. That's how engine's supposed to sound. Just keep taking care of it and it'll run forever.